Well, hello there, long time no see. So, today's video is going to be something that I've not, not done before, but something that I've never really done right, I guess, or uh, to the best of my ability. And as you can tell, we have the Intrepid in here, and you can probably tell by the title of the video what is gonna be happening. So, we are going to be switching out all of the rear lights, except for one set, and one set of the front lights and a few of the interior lights with LED lights. Uh, I like the safety and I like the way it looks and it just makes sense for me. I really love the lighting aspect of cars usually, no matter what kind of car it is. Something I've always been interested in since I was a kid. So, um, yeah, this car is the next candidate for an LED light swap. So, uh, before we get into it, one thing. Uh, if you notice, whenever I was backing up, there is a light bulb out and it's not actually out per se. Um, it was something I had to do to make another light work that was more important. But basically the turn signal on the driver's side was having issues with connections. Uh, so I found out that I had a set of old 3157 LEDs and a good connection, I should say. They don't really need the good connection that the incandescent needs. So I swapped the LEDs into the turn signals and put the other light bulb for whatever reason into the brake light. And now it doesn't work because of course it doesn't work. This footage here is basically just showing the corroded light bulb connection in the socket that I had. Very nice. And of course, this is a little bit of footage slash photos of when I actually installed the original LEDs into the turn signals, as well as the flasher relay that I will talk about later in this video. So we'll go ahead and get ready real quick. Um, I will actually pop the hood because I do, like I said, have a few front lights to do. And the interior lights will probably come last. So let's get into this. Oh yeah, I completely forgot I did this a few months ago as well. So it appears to install this daytime running light module, there is a spot for it in the fuse panel in the side of the dash of the Intrepid. Let's go have a look. Yeah, this is still here by the way for the moment. But there it is, the magical module. I already uh, had a look at the fuse panel here. You just pop this piece of plastic off that goes right in there. And so, the daytime running lamp module should be, theoretically, I think way back in there. Uh, I don't know what this is either. It's just a plug that's unplugged. I don't know. And so now that I'm actually looking at the module, you see our little plug there. I believe that actually matches up perfectly with that little plug right in there that's very hard to see. It's going to be very hard to get to. Hooray. I also don't know what this is, but it's kind of in the way and I might need to remove it. We'll see. And funny enough, it actually wasn't that difficult to install. You could see it right back in there with the barcode on it. So I guess the next thing is to test it, question mark. I don't actually know if I can be I'll be able to see it easily. Might have to grab the tripod, but we'll see in just a second here. I'm gonna put this stuff over there for a moment. I don't have my keys for some reason which is cool. Um, I guess I'll grab those. All right, keys have been acquired. Let's start this thing up and see what happens. I think they might only work when the car is in drive, but we'll see in a second here. I guess I'll watch the dashboard. I don't think we're gonna have an extra light on or anything, but we'll, we'll watch it just because. Waiting for powering. Um. I do see a door open one that I've never really noticed before. Let's have a look out here, I guess. Hey, look at that. They do actually work when the car is in park. Ha, look at that, that was easy. Easiest module install in my life. All right, well that's done. So now we move on to other stuff, I guess. Cool. So obviously I mentioned the fact that the turn signals are now LEDs, which I will show off real quick. And I would like to also show off uh, different comparisons and uh, various other things relating to all the swaps I've done. So we'll go ahead and back here. 
as you can tell, that is an LED. You can tell how slowly the front is flashing versus the back, which is instantly on and instantly off. Um, of course, it's a 3157, a regular one, not tinted at all. So it's got a blue tint to it of sorts, and it makes the light look slightly more blue than it needs to be. And on the same note, the passenger side has also been converted to the same light as well because I wanted symmetry. So now I have symmetry between the two sides. Now for this, something I'll get into right away is the fact that to get this to work without the turn signal flashing fast, uh, as many of you know, whenever you switch to LEDs, you have a light burned out in a normal car like this, it will flash the lights fast because that's how it lets you know that you have a light out. Um, basically, you won't be able to see it at all, but up underneath the dashboard here, um, I actually installed a flasher relay from Napa. Uh, if you look it up specifically for the 2004 or 98 to 2004 Trepids Concords 300 amps, there is a specific Napa branded, actually I have the box for it still, now I think about it, but specific, Na specific Napa branded flasher relay that you can in fact use to have correctly flashing lights in these cars. Oh yeah, I forgot I bought a, a trunk light too. I'll have to install that. Or I just bought regular lights for the trunk. Um, I don't know, I'll get this mess fixed. So, first off, if you hear a weird sound, it's because I have the AC going, because this car is very hot because it's been sitting outside all day in the sun. But for once, believe it or not, I am as fully prepared as I'm going to be for this video. I know, crazy. Planning? Preparing? Wow, it's new for me. But, you will see all of my LED light bulbs. I will be replacing all of the incandescent bulbs in all of the places with. Uh, now I'm going to explain something real quick. So this isn't every light bulb for the exterior of the car. I'm missing three different sets of lights. Two of those being the headlights and high beams in the front because I plan to do some actual really nice LEDs for that that apparently work really well with these cars, don't flicker, and are nice and bright. Uh, and I want to do a little bit more with that. So that will actually be the next video that I will do of this kind of little series, I guess. Um, but the third set of lights, funny enough, that I do not have are license plate lights because I personally don't care that much about the license plate lights because they don't really help with safety per se and I don't know I'm not a huge fan of the way that super bright LEDs look in the license plate area and speaking of super bright LEDs I actually bought all of these LEDs from the company super bright LEDs which funny enough they are fairly local to me uh, their warehouse is about a 30 35 minute drive away from where I live and I actually picked all of these bulbs up at their warehouse, which was super cool. Uh, I definitely plan to do more. And also, it's funny because I always see super bright LEDs as a company uh, is always recommended for LED lights for cars. So it's kind of cool that that place like that is actually close to me, which usually they aren't. But let's go over the lights that we have here real quick. So we'll start from the front here, which is the front of the car. We have a turn signal and a turn signal slash marker light up for the front. Then right here in the middle is actually the four dome or courtesy lights for this car. If I open the door here, I can actually open the door. Hold on. I don't, I think it has an, it definitely has an alarm, so I don't want that to go off. But if I open this, or actually I don't really need to open that, you can see there's two lights up there and there are lights above each of the doors. So those four little boxes right there will replace those because it's very, very difficult to see inside this car at night, and those are the only lights that you get. So those will be getting replaced. I'll probably do that towards the end of the video. But then, going back, we have our brake lights, turn, or not brake lights, turn signals, reverse lights, and the little bitty uh, side marker lights for the back for both sides right there. You can see on the boxes, they kind of have a description written on them as well for like the bulb type as well as the color Stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And then we have the brake lights just behind those. And then finally, the third brake light and my accidental addition I just did, which is the trunk lights. I don't have LEDs for those, but I will at least put one in to have a working trunk light until I replace it fully with LEDs. 
And speaking of which, you may be wondering, hey, what are you gonna do like interior lights, like all of the gauge lights and maybe in the radio and stuff like that? That will all be done in another video. But for now, uh, this was the money that I wanted to spend. So we shall take care of all of these lights. Let's get started and I will also be showing, um, I'm sure it's fairly similar for all of the LH cars of this generation. So that would be Mini Intrepid, the Concord LHS, and 300M from 1998 to 2004 or so. Uh, it'll probably change a little bit per car on how you actually move these, or replace things and basically take things apart. So this will be specifically for Intrepid, but I wouldn't say it would be too different for the other cars. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration of all the lights on the back of this car as they sit now. So the first light I actually want to tackle real quick, just so I have maybe a little bit of extra lighting here in the trunk, is going to be the trunk light, of course. I actually have no idea of how to take this apart, so I will climb up there and see what I can do real quick. Update, this is actually stupidly easy. All you have to do is just reach up here somehow and hit one of these little clips on the side, and then the whole thing just falls off, and then there is actually no light bulb in there. Hmm, interesting. All right, I'll fix that real quick. So I actually commandeered a uh, light from here in the garage, so that will be helping light up a little bit of what I'm doing here. Um, but apparently, these 194 bulbs, which you see right there, uh, these are actually interchangeable. It's a 906 bulb that it's supposed to have, but um, since these will apparently work, and I'm going to be working in the trunk here anyways for a bit, I am going to just attempt to use one of the 194s and see what happens. Which is interesting because uh, I have to get myself in here somehow, and see, does this move? No, not really. It's gonna light up and blind me probably. Okay, so that didn't work. Will it go the other way? Hey, there we go. Eh, go in. There we go. So now, so I'll take the camera off of there. I now have, well, I'll turn this off too. I now have a trunk light that is also very dim. Um, but you'll notice another thing that I specifically picked out some lights for, which is the fact that the all the white lights, or the clear, I guess you call it, are all more natural or more yellow uh, tinted compared to the blue tint that you see on a lot of LEDs that you just buy, kind of similar to the ones that I have in my turn signals. So, I just really wanted a natural light because I can't stand the blue tint. So yeah, um, that'll, be be that'll be getting switched over to a normal light bulb, uh, probably actually really soon because it's not very bright. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But we, we did something so far, which is cool. Uh, we'll switch it over to a normal light and then we'll take apart the brake lights. Let's go. Alright, so now that I have a working trunk light with the correct light bulb, which is the 906s that I bought that are normal light bulbs, we will start taking apart our brake lights here, which is actually a pretty easy thing to do. Actually, I lied. So what we're going to do first, because it's very, very easy to access, uh, this car does not have a trunk liner of any sort, so taking out the bulbs for the third brake light is that easy. So what I'm going to do, real quick, is I'm going to actually just replace one of these with, wait for it, we have red 921 LED bulbs, which you can hopefully see maybe, I don't know where it is on the camera because I can't see where it's pointed, uh, but we're going to replace one of these with that and I will be showing you a comparison as well as just what it looks like not even in the housing. So uh, one important thing with LEDs. I've kind of alluded to so far is that you definitely want to get ones that uh, match 
the color of the light that you're trying to use it for. So brake lights would be red, turn signals would be amber, uh, obviously reverse lights would be clear or white. So I have red 921s and I will go ahead and take this bulb out of here. Luckily replacing bulbs is super easy, a lot of times you just pull them out, push it into there, and you just do that and voila it's in. LEDs do have a certain way they want to be plugged in, so if they don't work, you have to plug them in the other way. Uh, but I guess I'll see if that works. I don't really know how I'm going to see if it works. I actually have no idea if it's working, but I see a way to be able to tell, which is simply by taking out the other bulb, which is just a twist, and then putting this one back in and finding its, its little home there and twisting it in there. There we go. And now it'll be on the ceiling because that's where I saw the other one at. And it works. Cool. So we shall now do a little comparison of them both in there just so you can see basically the difference between having an LED versus a normal incandescent light bulb. Alright, so I'll go ahead and pop the other 921 into there because it seems to work just fine. And I will do the same thing where I remove one of them and I watch the ceiling to see if I put it in the correct way because LEDs are very finicky and they will not work if you put them in there the wrong way. I'm also going to have quite the collection of incandescent light bulbs after this. I will admit, it's going to be quite a bit. Wow, I grind. Okay, that's in. I'll do this real quick. And it works, cool. So that is our third brake light done. On to everything else. All right, got my good light out for this one. So, um, don't put my hand there. Sure, I'll put my hand, I don't know. Maybe I'll just set it down here because it won't be that long. So for our next objective, it is going to be taking out our brake light, which is actually really easy. If you see, there are three of these little plastic screws. You just undo each and every one of those. That, then take out this one. And there's one more up above. No, it's back here. I apologize that my hair is in the way. I know my hand is in the way. And actually what I'm gonna do, just for organization's sake, I'm going to shove all of these old light bulbs into the containers that the new light bulbs came in. Haha, <laughs> smart. Anyways, I have all of the screws undone, so all we have to do is just kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle on the light housing and hopefully not actually break it. I don't think I did. And then the whole light housing comes out, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'll probably do these one at a time, just so I don't lose anything. All right, so now here you can see the back of our light bulb. I have all of our LED boxes here. So um, I guess we'll start out with the brake lights, because that seems smart. And I want to do a bit of a comparison, another bit of a comparison, between the red LEDs I got and the uh, normal LED that's actually sitting right down here in the turn signal. So we'll go ahead and actually take that out and I will actually go ahead and shove this back in here so I don't lose where it goes because I don't think there's any really easy way to tell besides just having them in the correct spot. Uh, wiring, please. There we go. And yes, I know it's sitting up against the bodywork. It's fine, don't worry. I could actually literally... Nah, I'm not gonna do that. So anyways, here's the old Sylvania LEDs that I've had for years. I think I bought these for LS400 or Ranger or something because I've done LED light conversions on both of those, but specifically just the brake lights because I didn't want to worry about anything else. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take out the incandescent bulb, which this one actually stopped working anyways because of who knows why. <laughs> I actually don't know. And we're going to actually put the blue LED into there. And as I'll show you, I'm going to turn the marker lights on. You can see it has a blue tint to it. 
I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but I can definitely see the loop tins here. You probably should have the battery disconnected during all this. I don't. I don't really care enough because it's just these light bulbs are usually not much of a bother. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I will be taking one of our new red bulbs and putting it into the other brake light housing here. Ooh, that's toasty. It's actually not that hot. One thing about LEDs, they don't really get hot like uh, normal light bulbs do. So I will leave this right there. So a reminder, this is the new red one. That's the old bluish one. And if I go turn on the marker lights now, you can tell one is obviously red and one is very blue. The blue one does seem brighter on uh, first look from me, but I guess we will have to see. But now actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and shove these back into their respective holes. And we'll put the light housing back up here for a second. And before we actually look at it, take this back out, I'm gonna actually take out the little side marker light here, um, just because that will be less light bleed through. I'm gonna turn off some lights, and if I pick up the camera here, you can actually really tell that the new one, uh, or at least from what I can see, the new one is definitely brighter, and I can definitely see the difference in color temperature on the camera here, which is kind of funny. So, uh, definitely go with the red or amber colored ones if that's the color of light that you want to replace, because obviously it seems pretty smart. So, let's continue. I actually did want to step on the brakes real quick just to see. And wonderfully, I'll have to review the footage for that. But now, let us continue. All right, so now I will go ahead and actually take this all the way out. And I guess what we'll do next, since I already have the bulb out, is replace this little side marker light, which is almost impossible to see anyways, but it is a light bulb that exists for safety reasons. And also, I want all my lights to work as best as they can, uh, or at least all of the lights I find important. So we'll go ahead and Hopefully remove that guy. A little, a, little, a little toasty, a little warm. And we would place him with this guy, which is also a red break or red light. And I will go ahead and shove you into here somehow, some way. Come on, bud. Go in near hole. Definitely don't want to try and force things into holes like this. I think it's because of how they're kind of bent. Yep, there we go. And I will go ahead and turn the lights on again. And it does, so there we go. And we'll put this guy back into here. Hopefully it'll actually fit. And we'll do that, and that is all of our red lights done. I guess now, um, oh, actually we're not done with the red lights because this is still the old light. Let's replace this real quick. Test to Reno. Always gotta test before I put things back together because I want them to work right. As you can tell, it didn't turn on. So, what we'll have to do is simply just do this, do that, oh, and voila, it works the other way because of polarity or something. All right, so that all works. We'll go ahead and put this back on there. And I just wanna get a good look at what we're looking like so far, which is actually really good. I'm surprised that little side marker is actually a lot brighter than I expected it to be. It's brighter than the actual brake lights, or the, the, the tail lights. There we go, that's a word. Okay, so on to the lower lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the turn signal, which obviously there's nothing in there, because I already took that bulb out. So we'll grab our amber, which is this one. It says A18-T, it's a 3157 again, because this car has 3157s everywhere, even though it only needed 3156s. Don't ask me why, I have no idea. And we'll actually do a quick pause here to talk about the differences between the 3156 and the 3157. And so to put it simply, basically the 3156 
is a single filament bulb, which means that there is only a singular filament, aka the little wires inside the light bulb, and they're only made for one brightness output. Those tend to be used mostly for turn signals on the back of cars and reverse lights and anything else that doesn't have two separate brightness settings. Which leads us into the 3157, as well as this is the same between 1156s and 1157s and a few other styles of bulbs. Uh, but the 3157 has two different filaments. So you have the tail light and the brake light in the back and the turn signal and marker light in the front that are, of course, their own separate brightnesses or else you wouldn't be able to see if the turn signal was on or if the brake light was on. But it is the amber colored one, so we'll go ahead and test that out. And it does work and it is definitely amber. So that's cool. And so in you go. And finally, on the inside here, we have our reverse light. Go ahead and take that guy out, because you are not needed anymore. And you get replaced with the 3157 NW, which is natural white, T-CK, whatever that means. I don't know what that means, actually. Even though, it's funny, because it actually has like the little amber uh, like diodes, funny enough. Uh, but I guess I'll go ahead and leave that there and put the car in reverse and see if it works. Put it in reverse and it won't roll because ha ha ha. And that is actually a pretty nice, uh, not, it's actually very, very, uh, very natural or neutral. There we go. Um, the shade it is. So we'll go ahead and shove that back in there while it's on. And I want to actually look at what it looks like. Actually not bad. So let's do a little bit of a comparison. Let's see if I can actually get my turn signals to turn on or not, or my flashers, because they never want to turn on. There we go. Just gotta smack it enough times in there. They turn on. They're not the easiest to turn on. So we'll do that and we'll also turn on the tail lights and I will go ahead and turn some lights off so we can actually see what's going on here. All right, so obviously on the left is the new lights over in this side and on the right is our old lights. Actually, I'll turn off all of the lights in here. And funny enough, if you have the, uh, the emergency brake on, the daytime running lights turn off. Now you know how a little bit about how the turn or how about the, uh, the lights work on a Dodge Intrepid. Anyways, here we go. Here are our lights. Comparison between the original incandescents on the right and the LEDs on the left. I can personally tell that the LEDs are definitely brighter, which is good. Uh, you can definitely see the blue on the turn signal on the right. The shade of the reverse light is a little bit different, um, but not too blue to actually be annoying to me, which is nice. But yeah, it's actually looking really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and uh, basically just do everything on the passenger side real quick since it's literally the identical steps to what I did on the left side. Um, you literally just have to put those screws back on to secure the brake light back in place. And then I guess we'll move to the front and take care of those. Cool. I have found something very, very silly about how the lights work on this car. So as you can tell, I'm working on the other side here. I got the two, uh, well, I got one brake light in and then uh, the little side marker here. I just want to show what happens whenever I put the other tail light in backwards. So say we just put it in like, uh, I don't know actually how it went in. So it's in. Why is that on? It's backwards, obviously. Why is the third brake light turn on? Now, if I unplug it real quick, oh, I can't easily unplug it, hold on. Okay, it's unplugged. And you can tell it's unplugged. The third brake light's on. Why does the third brake light turn on whenever I have an LED plugged in backwards in a tail light socket? What? That doesn't make any sense at all. 
All right, great news. The back is completely done. I didn't realize that the marker light, side marker, or no, the side marker is working. There's just like a little drain hole or something down there. But the uh, the back is all done, as far as I can tell. It all looks nice and good. Everything seems to be working as it should. Obviously third brake light, can't really show that off unless I'm sitting in the car. So I guess we will go ahead and slide up to the front. All right, step one, open the hood. I have no idea what any steps past that are because I've never actually messed with the lights on the front of this car. But I guess we'll find out. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. Because I need to actually, I guess I'll start on this side. Uh, so, from what I can tell, I'll go ahead and pump up. Ooh, pump the jams. What I can tell is that there is a mount here and a mount here. And I don't see any other ones. So I guess we'll start by taking out those and see what happens. I'll have to find the correct size of wrench or ratchet real quick. That is too big, my friend. How is 5 16 too big, but the quarter is too small? Basically, I shouldn't need to take off like the whole bumper on this car to remove the headlights. I'm hoping that's true, at least. Like I said, all I see are these two, uh, two mounting location bolts thingies. Uh, it feels like it's doing, yep, that just loosened a lot. Oh my god, that's a long boy. Goodness gracious, I was not expecting it to be that long. The good thing is that I shouldn't have to readjust the headlight after messing around with it, so that's good. Um, because there's a little adjuster right here that I'm not going to screw with. Uh, you'll also notice that my headlights are starting to get foggy slash scratch slash crap. Um, I'll show it better in a second. That's one thing I want to fix whenever I actually do the full, uh, full headlight replacement with LEDs. That's a long boy too. All right. Now, theoretically, wow, look at that. I didn't even look up anything. I am a professional mechanic, but I don't know how to remove the headlight past this point. Oh, there we go. All right, so, wow, okay. Well, that was easy. Stay. Huh, so there's the back side of a headlight of a Dodge Intrepid, fun fact. All right, let's grab some light bulbs. Go ahead and grab this one. So yeah, it's 3157s again on the front. Of course, I have amber ones because they're on the front. Um, I'm going to throw the box in there. I will go ahead and unscrew it. And uh, funny enough, I'll show it better in the light. You can tell these lights are pretty old. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you can tell this light bulb has seen a few years of use on this car. These, I'm pretty sure every single light bulb on this car, besides the ones I replaced with LEDs already, are absolutely the original ones. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the, the amber is all cracked on it, which is fine. But anyways, new light bulb, obviously, it's amber. Go ahead and plug this in as per usual. Go ahead and make sure it works before I commit to putting it all back together. And where's my light switch at? Where's my light switch? I see it. There we go. And there we go. So there's the turn signal and the marker light on at the same time. And then I will go ahead and turn off the lights and I can see it flashing. The old light, new light. The old light is very white. Actually, it looks interesting without the headlight on. But uh, I was showing you the amber coating on the light and how it's flaking off. So you can tell that this light is very amber, of course, uh, because it's supposed to be. And then you look at this light. So I'll go ahead and turn my brightness down. That is not very amber. Also, this one I think is worse than the other one, looking at it from the outside here. Amber turn signals in the front again. Cool. But anyways, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and... I think I was completely off on my camera placement, but that's fine. It's all right. Go ahead and set that there, and I'll go ahead and shut off all the lights. Hopefully my battery doesn't go out doing this. I actually don't know how old the battery is in this car. I was gonna look, 
um, once I get done with this because I was going to do a tire rotation. And fun fact, the battery is right there. <laughs> if you can see it, I don't know if the camera can really show it that well. The battery is directly below this headlight. Um, and I was just going to see how old this battery was uh, whenever I did the tire rotation. Uh, so that will be uh, whenever that is. So we'll go ahead and actually stick the light back in for now. And see if I can actually get this back in here correctly. Don't want to screw anything up, obviously. Uh, but yeah, once I do the actual headlight conversion, I do want to actually take this, the headlights out, give them a nice uh, wet sand, and then there's they make a coating that you can put on these to basically protect them and have them stay clear and shiny for as long as they can be. And I would like to do that. Come on, light. I would like to do that at some point. All right, maybe I have to stick in this end first because this end doesn't want to go in. Oh, ooh, ooh, ah, oh, ha, ha, big brain. And I'll go ahead and stick these through and get them actually started on where they're supposed to be going into. I'll try and get the other one in real quick. Funny enough, I think you can get these cars with an underhood light, but I don't believe mine has one. All right, I need to get this guy in here still because he's not one to go in. Come on, bud, get in your hole. Why does this one not want to go in? Put the other one in. All right, let's undo the other one. Perform a sin because that one's already starting. I think it's actually going in now. Huh? That's funny. It actually worked somehow. And put this guy back in. Hopefully, get it actually to go back, actually into its home. I think it did. So let's go ahead and tighten this up. Like I said, it should have the headlights pretty much angled the exact same as they were. I don't think that taking it out and putting it back in should hurt that at all, I hope. I don't think it would, at least. It does look like there's a bit of a gap here. Might just be the fact that it's a 2004 Chrysler product. Not gonna lie. I guess, uh, real quick, I'll turn some lights on just to see what it looks like. And we'll actually turn all the lights off in the garage. I'd say it actually looks pretty good. Wow, that headlight, it needs some attention. That's what happens when you daily drive a 20 year old car after it's been sitting for who knows how long. You go from having really, really nice headlights, which you could tell if you watch the old videos I have of this car, from when I got it about almost three years ago now, and look at the headlights then compared to how they look now, there's a bit of a difference. But anyways, I guess uh, I'll go ahead and jump over to the other side, get that done, and we'll be done with the front. I have learned something interesting. Apparently whenever you replace all four of the turn signal bulbs with LEDs, the flashers, the four-way flashers flash fast. Well, it's a good thing that I don't use those at all, so it doesn't matter. I also can't really use them. You have to literally just smack the hell out of the top of the uh, steering wheel or the steering column on the button to actually get them to turn on. Um, and they still flash. It's not like they're not flashing, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is because the turn signal should work fine still. So I've learned that I have a little bit of an issue with my setup here. Let's see if I can get the flashers to turn on. There we go. What the? Now it's working fine. What? Okay, so... <laughs> If I turn the head or turn the lights on, the marker lights, after turning the flashers on, the flashers go fast. But apparently not having the marker lights on makes them go normal speed. But only whenever you first turn them on. That doesn't make any sense. Let's see if I can replicate it real quick. Let's see. So we turn them off and then no, now they're going fast all the time. Uh, apparently my flasher is not a fix-all solution for LED turn signals. So that's cool. And it was only after I put in the very last LED in the front. Hmm. So I might actually have to wire in, I guess just simply one resistor. But that kind of sucks. I, I pulled it outside just to let it run a little bit. And it did actually start perfectly fine, so I guess 
me messing around with the lights and having the lights on and having the key on have not really screwed with the battery too much, which is good. Uh, okay, well there's a, a new issue I did not expect. I guess we'll just make sure that's good. It's fine. So let's see. Right turn signal. Yep, flashing fast, left turn signal. Hmm, okay. Well, that's interesting and kind of disappointing. So I might actually have to find and wire in a, a resistor somewhere, probably in one of the front lights. And I have to take things back apart to do something to fix the flash, the fast flashing, because I don't like that. Hooray! Complications. So after doing a little bit of research, it looks like I'm just out of luck, at least for now with the specific relay that I have. It's a Napa LM470, by the way. I think the uh, actual box for it is right here on the floor in the back seat. Yeah, give me that. Yep, LM470, which is the one that is recommended to use for these cars for LEDs, but apparently doesn't work uh, if you have all four as LEDs, which kind of sucks. But I guess whatever, the only thing really left to do is I'll leave that open so I can clean out all the stuff. The only thing left to do will be to change out the light bulbs in the interior. So we have, like I said, we have one over each rear door right here, right there. And then the two in the front, and that is all of the interior courtesy illumination, I guess you call it, that this car has. There are none in the doors because it is a 2004, not 2002. Uh, they did actually have that in the older ones, and I think maybe the higher end models specifically. Not entirely sure, but I just have to replace these four bulbs and hopefully have some more light. And I'll show you real quick, um, as best as I can, how little light actually comes out of the factory bulbs that are in there. So here is my camera. So the lights are on on the interior. Why is that door locked? How is that door locked? Yeah, the lights are on. So they definitely need to be replaced because I can barely see anything myself in there, let alone the camera. So we're gonna go ahead and put in a new 194 bulbs that I got for that. Let's go. And I guess I'll go ahead and start with the front here. I think it should be as simple as basically popping this out. I can do it without even having a tool. I'm gonna actually grab something. I don't actually have an interior clip remover, parts remover, whatever you wanna call it. So we'll have to do it the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way meaning grab basically anything flat. And this part of a screwdriver kind of works. And basically kind of get, get an area where I can actually get this behind there, twist. Let me make sure I'm doing this right before I actually commit to this, because I don't feel like I'm doing it right. Also, these have a clicky clicky on and off function to them. Alright, so it basically just says... I'm going to get my finger back here. There we go. There's one out. And... Oh, I don't actually want to do that. There we go. And, as you can tell, or if you can see through the camera, there's a clip here and a clip here, and basically those go into the roof. Um, so, now I have to figure out how to actually... Well, let's just remove the whole thing, actually. That sounds like a fantastic idea. How do you clippy-clippy on this thing? Whoa, there we go. <laughs> oh, there's the, uh, the lights out. So, we'll take this somewhere real quick. We'll be on this table over here that has no space left on it. And then just the roof of the car, actually. That works. Or just the back seat. That also works. Hold on. And because I'm smart, I apparently stopped recording when I was moving the camera around to point it to where I could actually see what I was doing. And I didn't start recording again until I started working on the back lights. So basically, I'm going to explain what I did real quick. So you see the back of the light right here, and you can tell that there are wires going to two little uh, black little blocks of sorts, and that is where the lights plug into. And basically all you do is you there's a clip on those little, uh, I guess the holder for the light, 
you unclip that, pull it out, and then you have full access to the light bulb. And it's as simple, of course, as just plugging in the 194 LEDs and making sure that they work, of course. And then you simply just push it back up in the ceiling into the clips where it came from, and you're good to go. What was the recording during part of that? I don't know what part it was. I should probably grab bolts. Come on over there. All right, so I do have my handy dandy crappy old screwdriver here, because I know I saw a screw hole, at least. Oh yeah, look at that, there's one right here. Okay, I need a better Phillips head screwdriver, hold on. This one isn't working cheap. Okay, I got an actual thick or Phillips head screwdriver. So now, this does not want to come out. Oh, well, I think it's actually coming out. Yep, okay. It just took a little bit of finesse, you know? And uh, make sure I do not lose these screws, because that would not be fun. That right there for safekeeping, and then we get the other one. I don't know why it's uh, actually pretty difficult to remove. Why? Oh, it'd be smart to look and make sure that you're not, uh, you have all the screws out, particularly. That would usually be smart. And it turns out there's a screw right here behind the coat. All right, before it comes all the way out, I do want to grab the screw if I can. Whoop. Or just pull the whole thing out. I can't actually just grab the screw. It's not that easy. Whoop. Something just fell out. Ew. Bug. Very dead bug. Very long time dead bug. Right there. Uh, I'm going to try and get the screw out here. There we go. So make sure you keep tabs on your screws. All right, so now we have our light up here. Looks like we have another uh, flippity doodah situation up here. I don't really know how to actually remove that one. Sure, this could ever work. Let's just push that out and then push this one. Oh, there we go. That. There we go. So now the lens is loose. And if you remove that, metal, interesting. And I don't want to just grab this light bulb, but I don't see a way to unplug it. Uh, I probably should have disconnected the battery, but it's hot. Ooh, that's really hot. Yep. Um, I probably actually just close this door for a minute and just let it cool off on its own. Maybe we'll just do that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that and let this thing actually cool off for a minute. That bulb, so I can actually grab it. The good news, I can actually take this one out. Because the bulb isn't hot, well it isn't as hot anymore. It's still a little warm. Not crazy. But let's go ahead and stick the 194 in. Or the LED 194 I should say. Again, as always, it's literally just the same process of put the light bulb in socket, then test. Make sure it actually works. Uh, it does. Wonderful. And then put everything else back together. How did you come out of there? You came out of there like this. I don't know why you came out of there, but you sure did. And then put the clips back into the clippy areas. Okay. And then I'll just have to put the screws back in for that one. This one's being a pain though. The screw does not want to come out. Uh, two of the screws actually don't want to come out. But I guess, like I said, I'll try and get this one sorted back in there real quick. Okay, three out of the four things are in. So I guess, uh, I guess I'll get this other side sorted and then we'll have a look at the end result. Hopefully I can get this one sorted because it's very difficult so far. All right, I know you can't see anything, but it's time for the test to see. Well, the good news is that there is more light on the inside now than there was. Got all four LEDs in, got all the screws back in, didn't lose anything, didn't break anything as far as I know. So we'll do one last little comparison between various different lights real quick. And then that will be the end of this video and we will have to wait until part two 
where I replace all of the other interior lights such as the gauge lights and radio. I'm gonna try at least to do the radio. I don't really know what all goes into it. Um, but yeah, we'll do some quick comparisons. And now that it's quite literally almost been a year later, it is time for the final update on this video that I'm going to definitely have to re-edit and rethink with some certain things, and that is a lot of bass. But uh, something I added on that wasn't previously happening was the LED high beam bulbs that you might be able to see. I can't really tell. It is very hard to tell, but the daytime running lights are currently on, as I showed earlier in this video. I would gotten that module, and I went ahead and got some of those bulbs and installed them without recording because I'm dumb. I don't know. But they are in, and they work wonderfully, especially at night. But the big thing that was holding me up from finishing this video was... Oh, geez, can I even see down here? That is the question. Let's see. So there is a relay up in here somewhere. Probably can't see it in the slightest. Uh, but there is a relay that is the turn signal flasher relay. So, um, in the previous part of the video, it was going or is clicking too fast because even though it could handle one LED per side, it could not handle two LEDs per side. But now, As you can tell, it is working pretty much perfectly. Show you the outside here real quick. You can tell, working absolutely flawlessly. Looking great here on the back too with that orange bulb in it. And also up front here, it's hard to see, but one of my complaints about these lights is that they're a little hard to see uh, in the daylight. But I think they do reflect enough. Um, I was actually thinking about getting some sort of like diffuser style like plastic and trying to put it in there so it would diffuse it better. But we'll have to see in the future. Uh, the lights are fine by the way. The daytime running lights are just on half power and they flicker under camera. But yes, that works perfectly. I'll see if I can get the flashers on actually real quick. Oh, it actually they turned on right away. Look at that. But there you go. They actually show up better straight on for sure. But this project, or this first part of the project is coming to a close, I guess then. Have one more look at the back. And there we are. So that is half of the 2004 Dodge Intrepid converted to LEDs. I still want to go through the interior lights and whatnot because having brighter gauge lights would be very nice. They should be able to be seen more than this, but, you know, it's not happening. So this might be hard to hear, but one interesting thing I've noticed with this new relay that I got uh, is whenever I turn the flasher, the, uh, the turn signal's on, or the flasher's even, so it's clicking, you can possibly hear it. I'm going to try and get the camera down here so you can hear it better. So I'm going to turn it off. If you notice, there's a few extra clicks. So there's on, off. I don't know why it extra clicks, but it sure does. Um, something I'm not too worried about because they still work fine and they don't actually flash more. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. And yeah, that is basically that. Finally, a conclusion to this video after, like I said, almost a year now since I originally started recording it. Uh, it's been a bit. And so that will conclude this first part of converting my Intrepid to all LEDs. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I will definitely try to make the next one better. I know I kind of didn't do the best on this one, but you know what, I tried. 
So I will definitely put in more research and whatnot, but for now, thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next part.